left pneumonectomy principles of pulmonary resection so if there is any doubt about the resectability all of the vascular and bronchial structures should be identified prior to the division of any structure and to be sure that the lesion can be removed in entirety and safely for vat resection the veins and the arteries are dissected surrounded by the vessel loop and divided usually with the stapling devices for open resection through the thoracotomy the vessels can be divided over clamps and over sewn the double ligated or transfixed as the pulmonary arteries and veins are thin walled performing ligation alone on the large vessel or a single ligation should be avoided the vessels can be over sewn transfixed or double ligated depending on the surgical preferences Bronchus is cleared of the lymph node but not of the peribronchial tissue to avoid devascularization. It is then surrounded by a vessel loop and ligated. Once the remaining lung has been seen to be inflated during the test reinflation, a stapling device is generally used as it provides the secure seal and even the distribution of tension along the suture uh, closure line. When the lymph nodes are excised, it is important to clip and cauterize the small feeding vessels to the nodes as they are a common source of re-thoracotomy for hemostasis. After achieving hemostasis, the lung is reinflated under the saline to check for any air leaks, especially from the bronchial stump. The chest drain is then placed via the port side and the lung is reinflated and the chest is closed. Understanding of anatomy is essential in performing the surgery and major lung resection. The left main bronchus is longer than the right and extends through the aortopulmonary window to the carina deep in mediastinum. Conversely, the left main pulmonary artery is only a couple of centimeters long outside the pericardium. The most anterior structure of the left hilum is the left superior pulmonary vein with the bronchial bifurcation and left upper lobe bronchus immediately behind. The left pulmonary artery curves around the left lower lobe bronchus starting superiorly and passing posteriorly. This close relationship means that care is needed when dissecting around the left upper lobe bronchus. The most inferior hilar structure is left inferior pulmonary vein. So, uh, positioning of the patient, lines and monitoring, general endotracheal anesthesia, mediastinoscopy, and right lateral decubitus position, left thoracotomy and uh, we need to take down the pulmonary ligament and mobilization of the lung encircle and ligate the pulmonary veins and arteries mobilize and uh, retract aortic arch laterally and cephalate division of the ligamentum arteriosum lymphadenectomy and mobilization of the airway dissection and encircling of the trachea right main uh, left main bronchus Withdraw the endotracheal tube to the distal uh, cervical trachea. Incise uh, trachea guided by flexible bronchoscopy. Incise the left main bronchus. Insert a central catheter into the uh, left main bronchus for ventilation. If needed. Uh, nodal dissection should be performed and uh, if there is anastomosis uh, is done like uh, then we need to suture the anastomosis and uh, terminate the ventilation and check for any air leaks and uh, desired reinforced uh, pedicle flap is needed just tube placement hemostasis, thoracotomy, uh, closure. 
and then extubation of the patient. So left superior pulmonary vein which is most anterior higher structure is divided where it exists uh, pericardium inferior pulmonary ligament cauterizing the small vessels of the inferior margin. Station 9 lymph node just uh, located below the left inferior pulmonary vein. Left inferior pulmonary vein which is the most inferior higher structure. Left pulmonary artery which lies immediately superior and posterior to the left main bronchus. Station 10 lymph node which lie around left main bronchus when excising the lymph node. It is important to preserve the peribronchial vessels to avoid devitalizing the bronchial stump. Left main bronchus which is stable flush at the carina to prevent the long stump as it is a risk factor for bronchial fistula formation. Bronchial stump coverage with intercostal muscles, pericardial fat or other local tissue further reduces the risk of fistula formation. So appropriate care should be taken including the pulmonary function test, media stenoscopy should be performed if needed. Injury to the left recurrent laryngeal nerve during dissection can happen. Injury to the thoracic duct after the aortic mobilization. And excessive lateral dissection along the airway results in inadequate blood supply. And uh, tension on the airways should be avoided. And uh, look for any leaks uh, to avoid bronchipural fistula. So it, d when performing the wax lobectomy, we usually give three to four uh, incisions and we don't spread the rib. The anatomic lobectomy using the individual higher dissection and node sampling is performed. Lobes are removed in a bag without uh, through a one port which is enlarged up to 6 cm. So advantages of VAT lobectomy is less postoperative pain, preservation of pulmonary function, blunted inflammatory cytokine response, shorter chest tube duration, shorter length of stay, reduced overall cost, early return to full activity, and adjuvant tra treatment is better tolerated. It can be performed for uh, stage 1 lung cancer, and early uh, patients with poor performance status, elder patients with poor performance status. Contraindication of VAT lobectomy include the inability to achieve complete resection, T3 or T4 tumors, N2 and N3 disease, inability to obtain single lung ventilation, large tumor more than 5 cm, too large to be removed through utility incision. Relative contraindication include conditions that compromise the safety of the dissection, pre-op chemotherapy, radiation therapy or both, presence of hyalur lymphadenopathy complicating dissection, presence of extensive adhesions, invasion of extra pulmonary structures, tumors visible at bronchoscopy. The concerns are is it safe? So far no intraoperative death or major complications uh, in major trials and uh, is the complete cancer operation any advantages over con uh, conventional therapy. Post-operative pain usually less and has been shown in many publications, post-operative pulmonary functions, effect of uh, inflammatory response and quality of life. Risk management of intraoperative bleeding, tumor recurrence in the incision and adequacy of the cancer operation. Complications seen after VAT surgery are uh, usually there is no intraoperative death, perioperative death uh, caused by respiratory failure, PE and MI. Complications include air leak, atrial fibrillation, uh, serous drainage, readmissions, MI, empyema, bronchopleural fistula, anemia. So it's safe on oncologically effective surgery, demonstrate feasibly demonstrate advantages by less pain, preserve pulmonary function, less post-operative morbidity, less chest tube drainage, and shorter length of stay.
and early return to full activity. Thank you.